I can hear the Lord saying I'm aware and I've heard your prayer and no matter how you feel know that I am still in
no matter how you feel, know that I am still in
told you I'm gonna make sure I got that song for y'all this week. That's our theme song for the week. It's in the room. It's in the room. We had a reminder on Sunday from our pastor that whatever we were looking for, that blessing, that breakthrough, whatever it is, that healing is right there in the room. It's in the room. Listen, we are on day nine, y'all. Can y'all say day nine? We almost to double digits. We are on day nine. And uh, we didn't do devotion this morning because we put our devotion during our Bible study time. So um, if you are visiting with us, the women of the nine and friends, we are going through 21 days of devotion and prayer. We are on a journey of devotion and prayer together. So uh, today is our day nine. And our day nine is called, I Will Not Quit. So listen up, ladies. This is how we're going to do it tonight. Um, we are not, we are not going to, um, have our kickoff of celebration, unfortunately. That's on me, okay? It's been a very overwhelming week so far. But guess what? I want to let you know I celebrate all of you. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to do some shout outs really quick. Hey, Helena Hargraves, we honor you. Sister Deborah Barker, we are honoring you. Lorianne, we honor you. Lisa Franklin, we honor you. Kenya Carter, we honor you. Linda Johnson, we honor you. Terry, Tammy Perry, good Sister Perry, how you doing on tonight? We honor you. We honor you. Sister Beverly Willis, we honor you. Tracy Holloman, we honor you on tonight. Amen. Amen. I, oh, that's... Oh, uh, <laughs> I was going to say Carter, Carter. But hey, we honor you. Um, who else is on the line on tonight? Let's go through and see who is watching with us. Sister Demetria Johnson, we honor you on tonight. We honor you. Sister Ernest Racy, we honor you on tonight. Um, who else is watching with us? Tanja Denton, we honor you. Sister Nene, we honor you. We honor you ladies on tonight. Terrilyn Arnod, tonight we honor you. All of you guys, listen, we celebrate you. We honor you. We will be back with our individual honorees on next Tuesday. But on tonight, I, we honor all of you. I'm so happy that you guys are in the room with us on tonight. Teresa Green, thank you for joining us. You've been with us in the morning time. On tonight, we honor you. We honor you on tonight. You guys are... You guys, I am so... <laughs> thank you, Kenya. <laughs> hey, you guys, I am so happy to be here with you because guess what? Today is day nine. I will not quit. I will not quit. Um, uh, we have been having an amazing time in the day, the 21 days. We are not... We're almost halfway there. Two days, we'll be halfway through the journey. It's like it's moving pretty fast uh, this season. But today is day nine. We will not quit. I even got to... Listen... I'm going to put this up here for y'all. We will not quit. I will not quit. I will not quit. I need you to put that in the comments for me on tonight. I will not quit. I will not quit. Our scripture on tonight, our key scripture, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 9, 61 through 62, okay? Before we dive into our devotion, um, let's have a quick word of prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you on tonight, God. We thank you for this opportunity to come together virtually to study your word. Uh, your daughters are here to hear from you. So we honor you, we love you, and we thank you for your word. May we uh, take in your word. May we digest it, Lord. May we believe in it. May we not just talk it, but we walk out your word. It is in your name, your son's name, Jesus, that we pray on tonight. Amen. And thank you, God. Listen. And I will not quit. I will not quit. I will not quit. You know, uh, this is our devotion. So I'm not going to have any uh, additional slides for you tonight. We're going to do it just like we do it in the morning time. All right. But I'm going to read a little bit of the book. I'm I promise I'm going to read a little bit of the book because I have not been doing that. Amen. Sister Tracy Smith. Hey, sis, we honor you on tonight. We love you. Thank you for joining us on tonight. Amen. I will not quit. So our devotion says to us on today, it says today, 
um, I want to encourage you. Uh, I want to encourage your heart and spark something deep within you to endure. Trying to stay focused can be difficult, whether it's trying to stay balanced, trying to reach a goal, trying to finish school, trying to climb the career ladder, or working to uh, progress in ministry, in your ministry, in our ministry. You may know the feeling just when you are close. I mean, we get so close, and I know this, we get close to reaching that goal. A storm comes, a distraction comes, an obstacle gets in our way, a roadblock comes, and it makes it hard for us to keep pressing. But on tonight, though, the, the encouragement is, I will not quit. I won't quit. I'm not going to let you quit. Sister Tracy Smith, you cannot quit. Nona Council, hello to you. We will not quit on tonight. Sister Deborah Barker, we are not quitting on tonight. Alice Flake, Flake, thank you for joining us on tonight. Listen, we will not quit. We will not quit. We will not quit. And I just want to let you know right now that quitting is not an option. No, ma'am. Not, it's not an option. It's not an option for any of you on tonight. Some of us may think that, um, no, no, Sister Card, I haven't get up, given up because I'm still serving. I'm still serving God. I'm still doing what he asked me to do. But some of us are serving in a grudging, uh, a grudgingly type of way. We are. And so uh, that's when uh, we get to the point where we say, um, I'm, I'm going to do it, but, I, you know, I'm going to do it just because I, I know this is what I'm supposed to do. And if you're going to do it um, half-heartedly, God says, I don't, I, uh -uh, not, you can't quit on me. Because if you're doing it half-heartedly, that means you're doing it halfway. And we don't do nothing halfway for God at all. There is no halfway. Because uh, if you're doing it halfway, that means you're going to already quit. And t today is I will not quit. It's so I will not quit kind of day. He says, I need all of you and I need all of you in this process so you cannot quit. You do not have permission to put down the plow. I, I ain't got no permission. I ain't got no permission slip from him and you ain't got it either to put down the, down the, plow, the plow. He says, you got to be all in with me. I need you to be all in with me. Because here's the thing. You got to remember that you are needed. You are necessary. You are necessary. I have to read this from the book also. It says today, I want you to make a decision to give yourself more credit for the victories you have accomplished over the course of your life. Maybe whether they're big or they're small. Contrary to popular opinion, these experiences and even your failures qualify you for your next. Say, I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. Life has groomed you for this very moment. That's why you cannot quit. You cannot give up. You are the sum total of every hiccup you've had, every mistake you've made, um, every accomplishment, and every storm that you've been through because why? You have survived it. So that's why you cannot quit. It's a I will not quit type of day. And God says, I need you. We need you. Your sisters need you. You are necessary. And we need you just the way you are. Flaws and all. Flaws and all. I don't care what you're going through right now or what you've been through already. We still need you. And what we need you to do is we need you to stay in the game, sis. You can't, you can't get out this game. It's not okay to go and ride the bench. It's not okay to do any of that. Why? Because you are necessary. We need you on tonight. And today, you no longer have permission. Okay? So that little fake permission slip you got, you can go ahead and rip that up. Do whatever you need to do. Because guess what? You no longer have permission to hide. You don't have permission to try to put yourself in the background. You don't have permission to try to push yourself to the side. You do not have permission. Why? Because you cannot quit. God says, it's a I will not quit type of day. Don't even think about it because guess what? You can and you will. You will. You can and you will survive this. So guess what? It's a I will not quit type of day. Let me put our key scripture up here for you really quick. We're looking at Luke chapter 9 and we're looking at verses uh, 61 and 62 on tonight. Okay. Luke chapter 9, 61 and 62, and I'm reading the New International Version for you. Um, and it says, still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, 
No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. I'm going to read this again. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one puts a hand to the plow and looks back um, is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Um, yes, I love it. I will follow you, Lord. Yes, no looking back. I can, I will. Sister Beverly, I love you too. Listen, I just want to remind you. That reminds me. I just need to remind you, sorry, that your voice matters. That your voice matters on tonight. Um, we need to, uh, God needs to continue uh, to hear from you. Because uh, the worst thing you can do when you're in a spiritual warfare, and that's where we are right now, 21 days. You, can you imagine? I say this every time. 21 days. When we go into 21 days and we come together. We talked about this a week ago. Women coming together, getting on the same page, saying, hey, Satan, go back to the pits of hell where you came from. Like, he's intimidated by us. And he's intimidated by you coming on here tonight. He gets intimidated by you coming on every morning at 6 a.m. Listen, he wants the, the very first thing he wants to do when he attacks is to shut your mouth. That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to shut your mouth. He doesn't want you to open your mouth at all because he knows if I can get you to stop talking, Kenya, if I can get Helene to stop talking, if I can get uh, Tracy Holloman to stop talking, if I can get Tracy Smith, uh, Lisa, Ernie, if I can get any one of you to stop talking, then it, it, I've already put you in a position to quit. That's what he says. I just need you to stop talking. I need just need you to stop talking. If you stop talking, that means you ain't plowing. He says, I can if I can get you to stop talking, then I can stop you from plowing. Listen, y'all heard that uh P. Diddy used to say, can't stop, won't stop. That's the mentality we gotta take on. Like, we can't stop, we won't stop. And what we're gonna say to him on tonight is, I will not shut my mouth. No matter what my situation is, no matter what storm I'm going through, uh, no matter what obstacle comes my way, I will not shut my mouth. So what we see on tonight with uh, Luke chapter 9 is we see the man who says that um, he wants to follow Jesus. He says, I want to follow you. He gives him an immediate yes. He gives him an immediate yes. He says, I want to follow you on tonight. But as soon as he gives God his yes, um, we see the warfare starts to begin and it begins within him. That's where the warfare starts because remember the scripture says, uh, still another said, I will follow you, Lord. But, but first, but first, he says, but first, let me go back and, and say goodbye to my family. And that's where we see where the warfare starts. As soon as he says, yes. The war, the warfare starts within him. Yes, uh, Lorian, excuses. He starts giving an excuse, and it wasn't so much an excuse, but he says, "I want to go. I got to go back in and tend to my family first. I want to say goodbye to them. I want to make sure that they have everything they need before I leave them." That's what he says. That's what he's telling him. And that's when the warfare starts within him because immediately the enemy has him thinking that uh, I got to go take care of some other stuff first before I really do uh, follow you, uh, before I really give you my complete yes. And then God, Jesus, he follows up with the reply. Uh, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. He said, ain't nobody, you can't go back and, you, how you gonna tell me yes, but then go, you gonna look back. And it may sound insensitive, but he's not being insensitive to him on tonight. He's just um, letting him know, he's presenting the urgency uh, that comes when you put your hand to the plow. That's what he's doing. He's presenting urgency to him. He says, you say yes, your hand goes to the plow. It's not yes, and I'll be right back. No, it doesn't work that way. He says, you give me an immediate yes. You cannot look back. You're not even fit for what we're trying to do if you feel like you have to look back. <coughs> Excuse me. So Jesus, it seems like he's insensitive, but he's not. <coughs> Excuse me. He's just presenting the urgency. The urgency that comes when you put your hand to the plow. And I have to tell you this. 
with plow with the plow comes some pressure you got to be ready for that pressure and don't tell god your yes if you're not ready for the pressure if you're not ready for the pressure i want to share this with you because i was researching a plow today and a plow in those times was the lightest tool hey y'all y'all listening now it was the lightest tool that they used when they got ready to prepare the ground for harvest okay the only way the plow actually worked is the person who was using it had to apply some pressure the person who was using the plow had to apply some pressure thank you the person who was actually using the plow they were going to have to apply some pressure so what does that mean to, to to us god says you gave me your yes now I need you to apply some pressure on tonight. I need my daughters to apply some pressure on tonight. You can't tread through this thing real lightly and think, you know what? I'll just walk through this lightly without without applying any pressure. It's not like the ground won't is going to break up by itself. He says, I need my daughters to start applying some pressure on tonight. I need you to apply some pressure. And when Jesus was giving him this urgency about the, the plow, he was letting him know, hey, the plow is the priority i'm not saying that your family is not important i'm not saying that your family doesn't need you but i just need you to realize what comes first and that's me the plow is a priority we have to make it a priority and this plow you have it but it won't work unless you apply some pressure yes using the plow you have to focus on what's ahead yes you do and he says i need you to apply some pressure on tonight i need my daughters to apply pressure if you don't apply pressure change won't happen okay just like this man, I want to give you my yes, but I'm not ready to actually put my hand on the plow. If you don't put your hand on the plow to apply some pressure, no change will ever happen. The ground will not break up. And some of us are holding on to the plow and we are just treading lightly through this thing. We're thinking the ground is going to break up on its own, that that's how the harvest is going to come. That's not how the results come. He says, I need you to give me your yes. And when you give me your yes and you're all in, I need you to apply some pressure and you can't have a lightweight type of praise in this thing you can't have a light type a lightweight type of worship you can't lightweight serve the serve the Lord in this thing you have to apply some pressure you have to apply some pressure you can't move through this thing lightly and God says I need you to apply some pressure and what what is applying pressure do you need healing in your body I need you to apply some pressure you looking for a financial breakthrough he says I need you to apply some pressure yes I need you to apply some pressure you want your children to be saved you want your children protected I need you to apply some pressure exactly no lightweight praise I don't need just a little bit of your praise I don't want just a little bit of your worship I need you to come in here with your hands raised and lifted and you ready to apply some pressure. Remember, the enemy wants to attack us and shut our mouths. If he shuts our mouths, that means he can shut down our hands. And he says, no, I need you to apply some pressure. So you're going to give me your yes and put your hand to apply to the plow i need you to apply some pressure on tonight and i want to give you a few ways and we're almost done because this was our devotion i want to give you a few methods by which uh you can plow where you can dig deeper um into the ground where you can dig deeper into the ground ways you can apply pressure okay the first way you can apply pressure is with the word of god that means we gotta we gotta still keep diving in remember i said it's not enough to listen to your pastor on wednesday night and sunday morning or or come to the 21 days of devotion and prayer you gotta be in your word too and you gotta speak that word that's how we apply pressure another way is using the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus amen that's how we apply pressure your testimony today was testimony tuesday and when you put your testimony in the atmosphere we are applying pressure y'all uh the blood of jesus pleading the blood of jesus over everything that's how we apply pressure and then praise it's gonna be your praise 
It's going to be your praise. And why your praise? Because you got to open your mouth. Remember, we studied this before. God says it's in your mouth. It's in your mouth. And when I was looking at praise, it took me to another scripture. Um, uh, and I'll be honest with you, uh, Jose, Jose, I've never really uh, been in this passage. Um, but Hosea chapter 10 verses 11 that's another scripture we're going to look at really quickly and I want you to see how the plow and your praise and applying the pressure all connects on tonight amen how it all connects on tonight and I'm gonna give you a little backstory while I'm pulling up the scripture but Hosea chapter 10 verses 11 this is the English standard version says Ephraim was a trained calf that loved to thresh and I spared her fair neck but I will put Ephraim to the yoke. Here's the last part of this that I really want you to look. Look at Judah must plow. Jacob must harrow for himself. Other versions say that Jacob will break up the clods or Jacob will um, break up the ground. But Judah must plow. Listen, Israel, they were going through um, a situation, a series of, of different um, mishaps, a series of, of many obstacles, a series of many ups and downs in their lives at this time. They were going through a series of, of famines or, or droughts. And that's similar to how we are. Everything was so inconsistent. Just when things seemed like they were becoming consistent, Consistent, everything started to go back being inconsistent. Kind of like the state that we're in. Our times are so uncertain. Back in May, it seemed like we were getting back to normal. Uh, we didn't hear a lot about coronavirus anymore. Like people weren't getting as sick. And next thing you know, everything becomes inconsistent again. And now we have a new variant, the Delta. Then we see we have the Lambda. And uh, we still have people who were not getting vaccinated. Then we have the issue with our economy and they don't want to vote to keep the debt ceiling raised and then we have um, uh, uh, Afghanistan and then we see Haiti everything is looks consistent then it becomes inconsistent again and that's how Israel was at that time everything became inconsistent and just like the times were inconsistent so were they they were inconsistent in their walk they were inconsistent in their praise they were inconsistent in giving their honor to God they were inconsistent and they were crying out and God spoke to them through a prophet by by the name of Hosea and Hosea comes and gives them a direction on how they can now become consistent and he says Judah has to plow Judah has to plow what does Judah mean Judah means praise it means praise so that means that Judah has to plow praise has to apply some pressure to the plow and when praise applies pressure to the plow it says Jacob will be able to break up the clods what is a clod ground that is too hard to break up and it says I'm when you apply your praise when you apply that pressure Jacob is going to be able to break that ground to get into that soil that soil of suffering uh, that soil where uh, seeds have been planted because you will be able to reap a harvest even through your suffering that's what it says I need you to go back and read that chapter for yourself and that's a reminder for us on today that we cannot shut our mouths I don't care what the situation looks like right now whatever storm you're going through whatever difficulty you're going through somebody's uh dealing with uh, uh healing um not being feeling like i'm never going to be healed in my body the stress the weight of the world we talked about this before that super woman that s we wear on our chest without asking for help all that weight that we carry you still gotta praise you still got to praise. And it says Judah will apply, will plow. So your praise will plow. Your praise will get you through through everything. So you can't go and say, you know what, I, I, I give up. I'm putting my hands up. I'm going to go get out this game and I'm going to sit on the bench. No, your team needs you. You are necessary. You are still necessary. He says, I just need you to put your hand back on the plow and apply some pressure. And we're going to apply that pressure 
through our praise. Lord, we honor you. Lord, I give you all the glory. Lord, my finances don't look like that what I thought they should, but I know that you're a provider. Lord, I haven't been feeling well. I feel headaches, Lord. I feel pain in my back. I feel pain in throughout my body, but I know, Lord, that you will heal. I know that you are a healer. Lord, I know that you will make a way out of no way. Listen, it's testimony Tuesday. I don't even, I'm just, I, I, I was going to share this at the beginning, but we, me and, me and my sister, we were on our way to the dealership in my truck today. And on the way there, y'all listen, and it's pressure. The tire said it needed some air. It needed pressure. The pressure was low. It said that the pressure was low, y'all. And we stopped at the gas station to put some air in the tire. But the pressure never never moved up, but maybe to what, 30, 31. So we said we can get there. We can get to the gas station and we uh, to, to the dealership. So we started riding and we rolling on the highway, y'all. And we rolling at our normal speed of 75, 80, okay? And when we halfway there, the tire quits on us. The tire quits on us because the pressure goes from 30 to 20 to 10 to 17 uh, to 7 to 4. And the next thing I know, we was at a complete flat tire. But what did we do? We did not quit. We didn't quit. We didn't quit. And we made our way to a dealership. Not our dealership, but we made our way to the dealership. And we got there. They said, hey, this tire is done. But I, we had a full we had, we had a full size spare in in the in on the truck that had the right amount of pressure. And when we got there, we didn't complain, we didn't grumble, we didn't do anything. We still said thank you, God, for allowing us to make it to the dealership. Our praise still applies some pressure, and we still walked away without having to pay anything. We had a dealership that don't have nothing to do with my truck, a whole different brand, and they said, guess what? You ain't got to pay nothing. We just want to help you. Our praise applies the pressure. And I don't know if that, if y'all get that, if that relates at all to you, but it relates to me. I hope it relates to you too, Ken, because guess what? We didn't quit. Our tire quit on us, but we didn't allow the enemy to get in our minds to, uh, to stop our praise, to stop us from saying, thank you, God, for allowing us to get here safely. Lord, thank you for letting us make it on to our next destination. But hey, we put some pressure on that thing. We put some pressure on that thing. And that's what your praise has to do on tonight. You want to be healed in your body? Apply some pressure. Throw out some praise. Lift your hands. Speak it out of your mouth. We said the word of God. That's one method. Um, just If you can't say nothing else, just say Jesus. Jesus. That's another method of applying some pressure. And God says on tonight, you cannot quit. You can't get out this game. You are necessary because the sum total of everything you've been through, whether it was good or whether it was bad, whether it was a storm or whether it was sunshine, whether it was rain, uh, it's been cloudy in your life. Um, you've had the best moments in your life where you felt like the blessings were bountiful. He says, I don't care what it is. Listen, you still got to apply some pressure. You are needed. You are necessary. And everything you've been through is why we need you here because you've been able to survive it before. Before you can survive it again. Listen, we are surviving and we are thriving in this circle. We will not quit. We will not quit. We will not quit. And before I let you go, I'm going to read this to you right really quick. God wants you to know if you will give him your life, the assignment on your life is till death do us part. Yeah, the assignment on your life with God is, uh, is till death do us part. I love this. And the timing of your obedience does not belong to you. Realize the magnitude of what he's placed in you. He has an anointing inside of you. He has called you for a reason. You have a purpose. God says, I need you to realize the magnitude of what I put inside of you. This is why you cannot quit. There will be consequences if you put down the mantle. If you put down the plow, if you decide I'm going to try to tread lightly, I'm going to go to the background. Nobody will see me. He says there are consequences if you put down the mantle that he's given you and if you, and if you turn back. You can't turn back. There can be no half-stepping in this game. There can be no half-stepping in this walk. And you cannot quit. You cannot quit. So let go of fear. Let go of any disappointments from your past. Uh, let go of, of um, 
your perspective let go of any all of that and just put your hand on the plow yes calloused hands hands on the plow we are applying some pressure listen god you uh, ladies i want you to go ahead and put your prayer requests in the comments uh for me on tonight um and make your prayer requests known to god but i just want to remind you that this is a i will not quit type of day i will not quit so if you felt like giving up earlier today and you in this room you and it's not by coincidence you in here for a reason it's just a reminder that you got to stay in the game you're needed and you are necessary you are needed and you are necessary hiding in the back will get you in trouble lisa said yes no turning back there is no turning back and listen each one of us are depending on you i'm depending on you just like you depending on me to get to the finish line and we're gonna get there together because we're gonna hold each other accountable because we yes christine them and we said that let yesterday we ain't quitting we ain't quitting we ain't quitting. Uh, Sister Terrell and Arnaud, we're going to be lifting up your son, Lamont Arnaud, in prayer on tonight. Christine Nelms, we're still lifting you up in prayer tonight. Uh, our senior members, our senior women, Sister Dorothy Johnson, Lucy Herschel, uh, Sister Charlie Cole, uh, Sister Charlotte Tidwell, we're still lifting them up in prayer on tonight. Uh, we are still lifting up uh, Brother Dave Patterson and his entire family, Sister Ernie Racy, uh, who's on the line with us on tonight. We're lifting up the entire Racy family on tonight. Of course, we're going to continue to lift up our church family and our, our pastor. Uh, yes, ma'am, we are praying for strength for our sister, uh, Sister Arnett, on tonight. Uh, prayers for Sister Tracy Smith and her husband uh, that they, hey, you will not quit and we ain't going to let you quit, okay? We're praying for you. We're praying for you on tonight. Uh, yes, prayers for Carla, Gordon, and the family on tonight. We are praying for that family on tonight. Amen. Uh, let us now go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you on tonight, God. Lord, we thank you on tonight, God. We give you all the honor and all the glory that you are so rightfully deserving of, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for your unconditional love, God, for your unchanging ways towards your daughters on tonight, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for your son, Jesus. Uh, we thank you for that sacrifice on tonight, God. Now, God, we come to you, God. Uh, thanking you for your word, God. Thanking you for the reminder that we will not quit, God. Thanking you for uh, uh, reminding us to apply some pressure in this season, in every season, God. Uh, we give you your, we're giving you our yes on tonight, God, and we are not turning back, God. We are moving forward, and we will not quit, God. We will no longer hide in the background, God. We will no longer step to the side, God. We will no longer contemplate, God, or serve you grudgingly, God, or or do anything grudgingly towards you on tonight God we will give you our complete yes God and we're putting our hand to the plow on tonight God now God I ask that you continue uh, to lift up uh, sister Ernette Racy on tonight God she's asking for strength God and she's asking in your name and on tonight we're asking on her behalf God that you will give her the strength that she needs in this moment right now God uh, care for her God give her comfort God continue to uh, give her the peace that surpasses all understanding right now now, God. Lord, we lift up the entire Racy family, God. We lift up Brother Dave Patterson on tonight, God, and his daughter Destiny, God. Be with them, God. Comfort them, God. Uh, reassure them, God, that um, everything will be okay. We understand it is a day-to-day -day process, God, but we give you all the honor and the glory even in this moment, God. So we ask that you be with that family, God, as they continue to um, to try to move on, God. We ask that you be with them on tonight, God. Lift them up, God. Give them strength, God. Give them comfort, God. Give them reassurance on tonight, God. Allow them to cast their cares on you, God. Uh, we, we bring all of our burdens to you on tonight, God. We remove all of the weight that we're carrying and we, lift, we lay it down before your feet on tonight, God. Uh, you said in your word that if we cast our cares that you would care for us. So, God, we're asking for you to care for us right now. God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, we ask that you continue to uh, to heal, to offer healing. To uh, we're asking for complete healing uh, for Christine Nims, God, in her body on tonight, God. I ask you continue to lift up our senior women on tonight, God. You've heard their names, Lord. We ask that you uh, be with Sister Terrell and our Nod son on tonight, God. While well, you know what he stands in need of, God, whatever it is, God, if it's a part of your will, we ask that you do it right now, God.
Uh, we lift up Sister Tracy Smith and her husband on tonight, God. Uh, be with them. Uh, give them the desires of their heart as well on tonight, God. Now, God, I lift up every woman under the sound of my voice, God. I ask now, God, that you continue to bless them, God, as they give you their yes on tonight, God. Uh, they will apply pressure, God. They're looking for healing, God, so they will apply some pressure, God. Someone's looking for restoration, so we're applying pressure on tonight, God. Lord, someone is looking for a breakthrough, so we're applying pressure on tonight, God. We bind up everything that the enemy is trying to attack us with on tonight, God. We will no longer shut our mouths, God. We will keep our mouths open as long as we can, God, and give you all the honor and all the praise that you deserve, God. Every situation, we're praising you, God. No matter what the storm looks like, God, we're praising you, God. So on tonight, God, we're opening our mouths up over our children, God. We're opening up our mouths, God, over our households on tonight, God. We're opening our mouths up over our jobs on tonight, God. We're opening our mouths up over our relationships on tonight, God. We're opening up our mouths, God, over our church family on tonight, God. We're opening up our mouths to you, God, and we're asking in your name. So we're expecting of you on tonight, God. We ask that you do it, God. Do it on tonight, God. We open our mouths to you. We lift our hands to you, God. On tonight, God, we will no longer have our mouths shut. The enemy cannot shut us up, God. And we're going to tell everyone we meet, everyone we encounter, who you are and what you are doing in our lives, God. Now, God, uh, I ask that you continue to lift up our Ninth Street Church family, God. Continue to bless them in ways unimaginable, God. Continue to be with our pastor on tonight, God. Lord, we thank you for him, God. We thank you for his leadership, God. We thank you for the vision that you've uh, uh, given him to give to us on tonight, God. So we will continue as we finish out this fourth quarter to continue growing deeper in your word, God. We thank you for your teaching that comes through him on tonight, God. Lord, we thank you for the strength that you give him, God. We thank you for for the knowledge that you give him, God, to carry out this assignment, God. We lift him up on tonight, God. Lord, we ask that you continue to do what you always do, and that's provide, Lord. That's heal, God. That's uh, deliver tonight, God. Uh, that's redemption, God. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that we have received uh, on today, God, in the days to come. Lord, we thank you, we love you, and we honor you, God. And we are applying pressure. We are applying pressure. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Listen, y'all, it is day nine. Tomorrow is day 10. I need you to meet me at 6 a.m. I need you to meet me at 6 a.m. Tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Yes, tomorrow morning. And it will be worth it. It really will. And tomorrow's lesson is called it is worth it it is worth it you want to get a head start on the re reading it will come from romans chapter 8 verses 18 and we're going to be talking about it is worth it and it is worth it for you to meet me at 6 a.m if you cannot i totally understand we have jobs and things of, of, of that nature but watch the replay Watch the replay, invite someone uh, to watch it as well, share the video, do all of that. Um, a few announcements before we get out of here, okay? Is uh, a continue, continue. I want to say thank you to all the sisters. I want to thank you to all the sisters. I'm not going to call out any names, but all of you who have um, reached out, it, it, it made me feel so glad today when I talked to Sister Ernest to know that some of you have been reaching out and um, extending uh, encouraging words or even doing something for her. And that means a lot because I know we, we discussed about checking our circle. So that lets me know that we are, this circle is it, 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 the right circle amen and that means a lot uh to myself and to the pastor that uh we come together not just by words in our chat on facebook where we we do hashtag queens lift each other up but we're actually doing it so i say thank you um uh please reach out to her it can be by text um, so you don't you don't have to just try to overwhelm her with phone calls, but an encouraging word if you don't mind. Also, um, you can go to uh, Serenity Gardens online, um, the funeral home, uh, which is in Dumas, uh, to find out more details about the service. Uh, to my understanding, the service is uh, Saturday morning, this Saturday at 10 a.m. 
Um, I know that we, many of you may not be able to make it to this service, but you can go there and extend your condolences there. Uh, you can also um, uh, find out how you can send flowers or a love gift to the family if you so choose. But I ask right now, most importantly, is that we continue to lift her in prayer, lift each other in prayer, be that support system that God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. Uh, tomorrow night, you already know how it goes up. Or, yeah, it goes up, not go down. It go up. 7 p.m. with live and 45 with Pastor Carter. Now, last week was something else. So I need y'all to be here tomorrow at 7 p.m. I'll be looking for you in the comments, too. So you better be here at 7 p.m. right here on Facebook Live at the 9th Street Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. I need y'all in tomorrow, and I need you to invite someone. And I need you to make sure you share the live video. Amen. Amen. Hey, we, hey, Sister Kenya KT, we glad to have you back in the powder room on tonight. Listen, you guys have an awesome night, and I will see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Amen. Amen. Live in 45. Y'all be blessed.